Hello everybody, this is Dave here with Blue Bears Games yet again. Uh, today's episode is going to be Blues Brews. And today's brew is Morrow Nar. Morrow Nar for Commander. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Morrow Nar is, uh, she came from the Mystery Boosters, but also originally came from the Kamigawa block. It is a 5 to cast 2 3 rat uh, that gives all rats fear, and then you can tap him. Sacrifice a rat and put X11 black rat tokens into play where X is the number of rats you control So as you can see we're actually going with something. I don't normally do uh, I usually like you know a controlled style or anything, but basically anything but uh, Aggro and today's deck is an aggro deck <laughs> It has other elements to it of course, but as far as the deck goes it's basically just aggro and it's rat themed because I gotta be honest with you, everybody out there is trying to be cute and funny and make, you know, coronavirus style decks. And before this even was a thing, I already had this deck planned. And what better way to represent a plague than plague carriers like rats? So here we go. Here's what I've built. I didn't have everything that I wanted. I had to go ahead and acquire a couple of cards I wanted for the deck, but I was not able to get all of them. So the power level on this deck is probably pretty minimal, uh, probably a five or six. It's not really all that powerful. It's aggro, but themed aggro. So it's my take on what I wanted to do with what I had. So we start with Maro Nar as the, obviously the uh, commander. And I'm going to go over the lands. <laughs> it's a monocolor deck, so it's going to be easy. And let me go ahead and do a little zoomage here. Let's zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the cards as I'm doing it. And it's not working for me very well, so. There we go. All right. So I start off with a foil, snow-covered basic swamp. And then I went with a whole bunch of the uh, Modern Horizons versions. I think I went with 20 total snow-covered uh, swamps. No reason for them. It's just basic lands. But I went with 20 of them. Uh, so one of them is a foil snow-covered from Cold Snap. And then the rest are just the basic snow covers from Modern Horizons. So it's the rest of the lands in this deck that are going to actually make an impact. So Mutavault. Mutavault is a... Land that, for one, you can make it a 2-2 creature that's all creature types, so it fits very well into the rat theme. He basically becomes every type, but he also becomes a rat. So I went with a Mutavault. Thespian Stage for a couple of reasons. Uh, it turns into any land uh, I wanted to that's on the board. So there are other things in here, and your opponents might have stuff you might want too. Like if I'm playing against somebody who's playing green and for some reason they have a Cradle... Uh, I can basically make my own cradle, especially, and it's only going to be colorless, I get that, but it's still a lot of colorless, and there's reasons that I want to actually produce uh, a, a good amount of mana uh, for finishers and stuff like that. Uh, Arch of Varaska, uh has Ascend, uh, which means that if you have 10 or more permanents, you get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. Uh, this deck should get to 10 things quite easily. And for 5 and tap it, you can draw a card, but only activate it when you have the City's Blessing. So until you have it, when it's out, you can only just tap it for colorless. Rogue's Passage, because I do plan on making it so that I can... I'm not really Voltroning this deck, uh, but I believe that the commander himself can do a good bit of damage other than his own ability. So I wanted to put a Rogue's Passage in there just in case. I have another reason for the Rogue's Passage as well. Um, I'll explain that when I get to the creature section of the deck, but he makes things unblockable, so why not? Strip mine, I pretty much put one of these in every deck. Uh, I bought a collection a long time ago that happened to have, I think it was like 40 strip mines in it, so basically every deck gets one. <laughs> Witch's Cottage is a, it's also a swamp, so that's kind of helpful. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it's tapped unless I control three or more swamps. I believe I should be able to accomplish it untapped all the time. And when it enters untapped, I can put a creature from my graveyard on top of my library. It's very helpful. It's just mostly creatures. I mean, it's not all creatures, but it's pretty heavy in creatures. Bajuka Bog is a staple in Commander. When it enters the battlefield, all, I can exile all cards from target player's graveyard. And it adds a black. The only downfall to it is it enters tapped. 
Prismatic Vista since we are a monocolor deck. Uh, I've come to a realization that when I do my decks, monocolors get Prismatic Vistas, dual colors and tricolors, and basically anything more than two colors gets fetch lands. Uh, yes, this is a fetch, but it gets the colored fetches. So Prismatic Vista goes in monocolor, and regular fetches that are colored versions that get swamps and islands and all that stuff, they go into three colored decks. So this gets this. And the second thing I got is Fabled Passage. It does the same thing. Uh, searches for a basic land, puts it in the battlefield, taps, and then if I control four or more lands, I can untap it. So mono color, mon my mono color uh, fetches are these two right here. I don't ever change it up. I did originally start with uh, the regular fetches until Prismatic Vista and Fable Passage were printed, and I decided that mono color decks go with this. Uh, it's cheaper, usually. Uh, then going for regular fetches, and it makes more sense because, I mean, sure, you could have more fetches to go get swamps, but is it really necessary? I don't think so. Uh, next up is Urborg, Tomb of Vyagmoth. It's a legendary land that uh, each land, that's all lands, not just yours, uh, is a swamp in addition to its other types, and the reason for that is because of, oh, it's stuck to it, uh, Cabal Coffers. That combination is really devastating if you need a lot of mana to your opponent, especially if you do something like, I don't know, an X spell. Uh, two tap, add a black to your mana pool for each swamp you control. So no matter what land you have in play, if you have Urborg in play, all your lands are also swamps, so they count towards Cabal Coffers. <laughs> I also have the Stronghold in here. Now this doesn't affect that. Uh, I know that Stronghold only if, uh, counts basic swamps, but there are 20 swamps in here. Um, this may come out for something else if it doesn't perform like I'm hoping it will. Uh, but until then, i got to test it. Good luck to me finding somebody to play with right now. Uh, then next is Nykthos, Shrine to the Nyx, since we are permanent heavy. And it's mostly, I'll explain to you in a minute, that it's mostly heavy, heavy, double black casting costs. Uh, this is two and tap and choose a color and then add mana to your uh, mana pool equal to the, your devotion to the color you choose. Obviously, it would be black in this deck. And then Crypt of Agadim. Enters tapped, adds a black, or for two and tap, you can add a black for each black creature card in your graveyard. Again, there are going to be creatures dying. There are going to be creatures going back and forth. It's pretty much just, I'm going to test that as well and see how well that performs as far as, you know, like the, the Nykthos, Shrine to the Nyx, or... Cobalt Coffers I know are going to perform because I've seen it. But as far as Crypt of Agadim and the other one, I'm not sure yet. So we'll test it and see. I have other options I can choose for lands. Now, we go into the ramp section. I usually like to keep it uniform for all my videos. So I always go in an order and next is always ramp. Black doesn't have a whole lot of ramp. So it's going to be artifact based. Uh, so up first is Expedition Map. Uh, it's one to cast. To sacrifice, to tap sacrifice it, and search for a land card. So it's important to know that it says land card because this can actually go get Urborg, it can go get Cobalt Coffers, it can go get Mutavolt if you need it. It goes and gets any land you need, it doesn't just get a basic. Like Wayfarer's Bobble. Same card, the only difference is it searches for a basic land and puts it into uh, into play. Uh, the difference is Expedition Map puts it in your hand. Wayfarer's Bobble puts it into play. Soul Ring, because every commander deck made going forward probably will have a Soul Ring for all time, unless it gets banned, which I don't see it why it would. Uh, Journeyer's Cut. I took this out of another deck, which was a monocolor deck, because I don't only really have one, and I thought I had a better way of getting stuff into play, and especially lands, but I didn't, so what I need to do is go get a couple more. I like this card. It's not the greatest card, but it's cheap and does what I needed to do. Especially in a color that's not green, where you can't just go get lands willy-nilly. It acts as a repeatable land fetcher. So for two, it comes into play. Three, tap it. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. It does two things. It thins your deck of land draws, specifically basic lands, and it helps you get the land you need it it works better 
in my opinion, in a multicolored deck just because it can go get the color you need. But for the purposes of what, the way I play, I like to uh, thin my deck of the basics uh, of the of, for the monocolor decks. So I kind of also, you know, I can't just throw green into a color and into a deck that's mono black and go get land any willy nilly. So Journeyer's Kite kind of fills a lot of roles there. Uh, Armillary Sphere, it's two to cast and two and tap, sacrifice it, and you can go get two basic land cards and put them into your hand. Felwar Stone, I'm going to start looking into using Felwar Stone more in decks. I've been looking and looking and looking for for cards, uh, specifically Mana Rocks that are two to cast. Uh, talismans are great, i got to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of doing damage to myself. It never happened. I never liked the Pain Lands. I don't really like the way that most of the Talismans are or the Signets or whatever they are. Um, I like the two to cast. I don't like the pain. Uh, this one solves some of the issue. So most people play three color decks. You're mostly going to hit your target with a Felwar Stone. It's a three fifths chance that you're going to get it because you're going to be, you know, they're mostly playing three colors, and one of your opponents is most likely going to be playing the color you're playing. It's just that simple. So Felwar Stone hits more often than it doesn't. And even then, it just adds what becomes a colorless. It's two. It taps to add a mana uh, to your mana pool, and it may be of any type that, of a land and opponent controls that they could produce. Uh, so I, I like the two to cast on it. Uh, Heraldic Banner. It's three to cast. It when it enters the battlefield, choose a color. So obviously, in this deck, I would choose black. Uh, creatures you control the chosen color get plus one plus zero and then I can add one mana of the chosen color I went with this <laughs> for a specific reason the reason will be revealed as soon as I get into the uh, One section of the deck, but it's not the greatest It does tap to add the color I need for three and I don't like that, but it's got partial anthem It's got plus one plus zero. It's not plus one plus one, but it still does the job And I went with Nick Lotus for this deck I would normally go with Nyx Lotus for black, for green, or for white only. If it's monocolor, I only use a card like this in monocolor because it's based on devotion. Uh, it enters tapped for four, and then choose a color, add a mana mana of that color to your equal to your devotion to that color. The reason I would not use it for red or for blue, depending on the deck naturally, is because blue and red are usually Spellslinger styles. Not permanence on the board. And this deck is heavy with permanence. So I will use Nick Lotus in this deck. It's a great card. I love the way that it reads. I love the way that it plays. And I'm going to use it again if I get another one. Who knows if I'm going to get another one. Alright. So that's the, uh, the mana ramping, mana rock section. Not a lot of ramp codes on in black. So that's what I'm stuck with. We're going to go with our creatures, st creatures now. So, Devotion is probably the most important part of fueling this deck as far as the mana goes. Nykthos is in here, Nyx Lotus. So, <laughs> the reason why I went the route I went was because I'm using a Relentless, la relentless Rats deck. I have 20 of these in the deck. They read for 2 black, and that's important because they have... Two black in there, casting cost, it adds to your devotion, so for two black, one colorless, it's a 2-2, two, two. it gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield named Relentless Rats, they, Relentless Rats, they are essentially their own coat of arms, but only for them, and then a deck can have any number of rats named Relentless, Lat, Relentless Rats, so it breaks the commander rule, it gets around it, what have you, and I have 20 of them in here. So, I'm not going to get all 20 out, believe you me. Uh, it would be nice, but it's not going to happen. So, that was actually the reason. This card is the reason, because I had so many of these, and I had... This one is a Mystery Booster Mar Maro Gnawer. Uh, it's the foil version, but I do have an original version, and that's the reason why I went with it, because I had both of them sitting next to each other in my stuff. And I was like, well, that would be nice. So, that's why this deck. Next up, we're going rat themes here. Uh, Nizumi Grave Robber chose this because I want to be able to control some part of the board. We don't have counter magic. We don't have burn. 
Uh, I don't really like to use in Commander single target removal all that much. So this is my way around that. So for two, it enters as a 2-1. And then for two, and it's got a colon, which means that for every two I put into it, this is why I wanted the, um, the extra mana generation. So that I can abuse the hell out of that ability and then go from there. It's uh, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If no cards are in that graveyard, flip Nizumi Grave Robber. And it turns into something really cool. If you haven't seen this, it's a 4-2 now when that happens. And for 5, again, this is why I needed the mana sink. For 5, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Some people play some nasty creatures and a lot of people hate on them. I let other people remove and then I steal. That's the point of him. It's a mana sink that lets me control some of the graveyards. I can remove what I want to from them if somebody's playing, say, Moldratha or any type of dredge deck. Anything that has to do with graveyard, he helps me get rid of that issue. Uh, some of these are going to either be replaced when I find cards I would like uh, to add. These are just placeholders. This is one of them. Uh, I like what it does. It's great for aggro. It's a 2 to cast star 1. This is a portal version, so that's why it looks kind of weird. Uh, Swarm of Rats has power equal to the number of rats you have in play. With Morrow and Aller, you know, you get a, a rat into play, you sacrifice it, and you have a whole bunch of rats out. He gets kind of big. The problem is he's only a 1 defense. Uh, Pack Rat, 2 to cast star star. Its power and toughness is equal to the number of rats you control. Again, Maro Nar makes Maro Nar. I'm never going to be able to say that correctly, am I? Uh, he has the ability to, to really flood the board with a lot of rats. Uh, Pack Rat becomes way bigger, and the bigger he gets, the harder you can hit. And this is an aggro deck, so why wouldn't I? Uh, then his second ability is for three and discard a card. You can put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of Pack Rat. <coughs> now, the reason why I like this myself is because you don't get redundancy all that often when it comes to commander he is himself redundant he can make copies of himself and they can be big so you draw a basic land in the middle of the game you got 20 rats out he's a 2020 you discard that basic land you now have two 2020s and it just keeps going and he they can create more and more of themselves as they go as long as you have the cards in your hand the only issue is black has some okay card draw it's not blue it's definitely better than all the other colors though but it's not a bad card to have. All right. Typhoid Rats is another option that may be coming out later. Uh, he's in there because he's a one to cast, and he has Death Touch. Death Touch is a way to kind of get some extra damage in people won't block normally because they don't want to lose their creature, so that's the only reason why he's in there. Crypt Rats is in there for a Mana Sink, and possibly if I'm ahead in life for some reason, uh, I can actually use his ability to win the game. He's a three to cast, one, one. And for X, and it's a mana sink, Crypt Rat steals X damage to each creature and each player, and I can only spend black mana on that. So I can't use the colorless mana that may be producible uh, at a later time, but I can use the black mana as a sink. Ranted Rats is another one of the um, options to take out for better choices when I acquire them. Uh, it's 2 to cast for a 1-1 one, one with Skulk and Death Touch. And again, Death Touch is the only reason why they're in here. Uh, I need defense... Most people don't want to attack into a Death Toucher, and most people don't want to block a Death Toucher. And I'm going to show you how I make these guys really big. Septic Rats is the reason for uh, Rogue's Passage. So Septic Rats is a 3 to cast, 2-2. Two, two. Again, double black. I love the ability. To, in a monocolor deck, I love the ability of having double cost. Just because it really helps enable... Uh, a devotion stuff so that's why another reason why he's in here but the main reason is the infect so infect says this creature deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one minus one counters and the players in the form of poison counters and just if you don't know if you hit somebody and they have 10 poison counters or they get 10 poison counters they lose the game doesn't matter what life they're at so uh, I can make these guys get big so they can do, hit, literally swing in for the win. Uh, whenever Septic Rats attacks, also, it, if the defending player is already poisoned, it gets plus one, plus one. So if we come at 3-3, three, three, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to make them bigger. Pitiless Plunder is in there because Maro Nar 
sacrifices a rat, so, you know, whenever, an, it's a forty cast, 1-4, whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, sacrifice, and add one mana of any color to mana pool. Basically, it becomes a lotus petal. Uh, so it creates lotus petals, and there's going to be a lot of things dying on my side. There's going to be a lot of things coming in. I wanted to be able to take advantage of that by having extra ways of gaining mana. This probably should have gone into my uh, ramp side, but it's one part of the creatures because it might not work all that well every time, so at least it's a 1-4. Uh, up next is our Ayara, first of Lock Twain. Triple black. Love it when it comes to the devotion. For a 2-3, she's not a rat, but man, she's going to pack a punch. Whenever she enters or another black creature enters under my control, each opponent loses a life and I gain a life. Uh, I did not want to go the route that most people would go with this, and that is uh, all the... Uh, what is the name of the thing? Sorry, I'm having an MS moment. It's been a hot day today, and I, I'm, I'm having a small issue. Uh... What is the... Aristocrats, that's it. Aristocrats. I didn't want to go full on Aristocrats. I wanted it to make sense in the deck, not just throw Aristocrats in here just for the sake of the fact that, you know, I can make things die, I can make things come into play, I can make things die. I didn't want to do that. I wanted the one in here that made sense, and this is the one that makes sense. Why? Triple black for Devotion, and also the fact that I needed card draw in black that didn't hurt me all the time. I can sacrifice a black creature to draw a card with him, with her. So I wanted the aristocrats to make that sense other than just being aristocrat. Piper of the Swarm, to the cast for a 1-3. Rats you control of Menace. Uh, with uh, Morrow and Nahr out, the, that ability doesn't really do anything for me because if they have fear, rather than have fear, you know, it doesn't really matter. Menace, fear, same damn thing in this deck. Uh... Piper's in here for the ability to make tokens. Uh, for two and tap it, I can just create a 1-1 one, one token. But again, same thing with Nizumi Grave Robber. For four and tap and sacrifice three rats, I can gain control of a creature. So this deck has the ability to, to gain control of creatures that are dead or alive. More, A little bit more control style. I know I like control a lot more than I like aggro, but I had to put some control aspects into the an aggro deck. I always do. And then, the, not the final creature, but the final creature for now. Um, I'm going to go over two more creatures that are in here, but they're in here for different reasons. Uh, is Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. Five to cast for a 2-4. And again, here's that Devotion. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is equal to my Devotion to Black. And then I gain life equal to all life lost that turn. <laughs> Triple Black... Double black, a lot of black mana symbols on a lot of the cards coming into play, so it was a natural choice. So that is the basic package of creatures that went with for this deck. However, I'm going to show you two more. Next up is what I'm going to call my National Anthem for Blacks. These are utility, but they're not all utility. These are all Anthem style effects to make all the rats bigger. Uh, the main focus is going to be to make all of them bigger, but the side effect is to make the Infect one, if it gets out in play, really big, so you can do a big swing in and kill one person each turn. So we start with Metallic Mimic. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Obviously Rat in this case. Uh, it is the chosen type in addition to its other types, so it's going to be a shape-shifting Rat. And each creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter. So when I create all those rats, they're going to be two twos instead of one ones. Uh, Herald Torn. Oh, oh, oh. Let me let me go back one step. On the artifacts, the her uh, not Herald Torn. What is the other one? Oh, uh, hold on. Let me let me find it. Let me find it. I just realized this is where this one's a little different. Herald Heraldic Banner is in here because it's. I chose it because it's dual action. It adds the black when I choose black, and then it also is a half anthem. Uh, it should have been in this section, but it was also partially ramped, so it was either or. Uh, then I got the Herald's Banner. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, obviously rat. Uh, creatures of the chosen type cost one less to cast, and at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. 
If it's a creature card of the chosen type, you may reveal it and put it in your hand. So it's it's not an anthem, but it's a rat enabler. Everything in this section is going to be a rat enabler. Helps in some way, shape, or form. This helps to draw cards. It helps to make them cost less. So it goes in this section. Icon of Ancestry as well. Three to cast. And when it enters, choose a creature type. Rats, obviously. I'm going to repeat that over and over. Uh, creatures of the chosen type get plus one plus one. So there's the anthem. And then for three and tap, I can look at the top three cards of my library, reveal a creature card of the chosen type from among them, put it in your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So the hope is to keep drawing into Relentless Rats and make them relentless, just like their name says. Just keep them coming, keep them coming. Uh, Adaptive Automaton is the last creature, I believe. Three to cast for a 2-2. It basically becomes a Rat Lord. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, just like Metallic Mimic. Uh, it is the chosen type in addition to its other types, so it would be a rat construct. And it's an anthem. Other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one, making them bigger. So that's, what, three right there, four, possibly, anthems. All right, Vanquisher's Banner, five to cast. Choose a creature type. Creatures get anthems, plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. So, again, more things than just one. Makes them bigger, helps me draw cards. Uh, Eldrazi Monument, five to cast. Creatures uh, I control get plus one, plus one. Flying and indestructible, and then at the beginning of my upkeep, I have to sacrifice a creature, and if I can't sacrifice Eldrazi Monument, how scary would it be in the world today to see rats flying? Just think about that picture for a minute. I understand that bats are... Technically rats with wings, but imagine real actual rats with their tail and their teeth with wings flying around. It'd be kind of a, a scary sight. That would be the end of days, wouldn't it? Uh, coat of arms, because relentless rats having just their own built-in coat of arms effect wasn't good enough. I had to put coat of arms in here. Uh, each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature in play of the same creature type. Yes, it affects your opponents. No, I don't care. So, three relentless rats with this in play, uh, what is that? So they get their one, what are they, two twos, so they, each one gives each other plus two plus two from coat of arms, so that makes them a four four, and then another anthem of plus two plus two, making them six six rats. So, I have to go with that. Cage Sun, I, I have others, uh, this is the last one of this kind of card, my anthem cards in this deck. I do own other versions of Anthem style stuff, but they are being used in other decks or will be used for other decks. So I couldn't put every single one in this deck because I'm trying to diversify how I do things and what I do with each deck. I want them to try to be a little different. But Cage Sun is six. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose a color. So black in this deck. Uh, the creatures of the chosen color that you control get plus one plus one. And whenever a land uh, uh, lands ability adds one or more mana of the chosen color to your mana pool add one additional mana of that color so it ramps it anthems it's it's pretty pretty beastly i think it's a staple in most aggro decks when it comes to commander now i think that's why it was reprinted in the mystery boosters all right so those are the anthems that i have uh anthem style effects that i have two creatures and a couple artifacts <coughs> Next, we're going to go into the very little defense that this deck will have. Um, it's going to have three cards. It's the best I can do with black. It doesn't have defense. It's literally just go, go, go. Uh, the first one is Attrition. Uh, three to cast, and I like the double black. Again, the more black, the better. Enchantment, pay a black, sacrifice a creature, destroy, destroy target non-black creature. Yeah, it... <laughs> it doesn't kill a f like one fifth of the color pie. Uh, it's okay. I, I have other ways of doing it. I'm sure that I can force blocks in some way, shape, or form. So it does enough for now. Grave Pact. Whenever any creature you control is put into a graveyard, each other player sacrifices a creature. And again, look at all those black symbols. So for three and one. I can sacrifice my rats to put more rats into play to make you sacrifice your creatures, blah, 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 and round and round we go. 
And then in Garrick's Wake, it's not the best removal. I don't own Damnations. I only have one Bantu's Last Reckoning or whatever it's called. I don't have a whole lot of board wipes in black. I, I wish I had a place at a Damnations. Would be great. I wasn't playing planar, when Planar Chaos was around. I skipped that because I got married, had a kid. I don't have them. I wish I did. Uh, I could buy them, but they're too expensive for what I like to do. I'd like to trade for them. Uh, so if anybody has any for trade, let me know. I'm trading for them. Uh, but what it does is for 7 and 2, and the reason why I like to have the mana ramping in here, even though it's monocolor, it's because oh, this is expensive and there's another thing coming up. I'll show you. Uh, destroy all creatures you don't control and all planeswalkers you don't control. If you didn't notice, I don't have a planeswalker section in this deck. Uh, I don't have the only planeswalker I would put in here. There's a Liliana that surges for swamps. I would have put it in here gladly. I, For some reason, of all the Lilianas I have, I don't have them. So those are the only defensive things I have. Last part of the deck. <coughs> Excuse me. Last part of the deck is all about the uh, utility. Vampiric Rites, Enchantment, 1 black, 2 sacrifice a creature, you gain 1 life and draw a card, so it helps me gain life, draw a card, it does everything I want it to do. I love this card for every reason other than it's only in black. Uh, if they made op other options for this, it would be great. Obviously, it's a black thing, so I can't. Uh, Batu's Monument is a flex spot for now. Uh, 3 to cast, Legendary Artifact, black creatures you cast, cost 1 less to cast. Uh, whenever a creature spell, whenever you cast a creature spell, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. It's mostly in here to be a reducer of the cost of the creatures, but it's a bonus that it has the aristocrat style to it. I didn't want to do too much with it, but that one was basically a no-brainer. But it may come out depending on if I acquire other cards. Labrats is also a flex uh, depending on what I acquire in the next couple sets or with my next collections I buy. Uh, a one black sorcery with buyback of four, put a rat token into play. So create a one one rat token. It's there just to make tokens. Beseech the Queen is one of my favorite black cards ever printed. If I had more than one of these, it would go in every black deck. Okay? So, it is three black or it's split mana between... Two colorless and a black. So it could be three black up to six colorless. Or it could be one black and four colorless. It, it depends on how you want to play it. Uh, it reads, Search your library for a card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control and reveal that card put in your hand then shuffle your library. It's a demonic tutor, but it's limited by how many lands you have in play. So I love the card, especially in Commander. I wish I had more of them. It would, again, go in every deck. Uh, the altar is actually a flex spot, as much as I hate to say. Uh, not really sure how much colorless man I'm going to need with this deck. I kind of need the uh, ocean stuff. So Ashnod's altar is sacrifice a creature, add two colorless. I, I can use it. I have a way to utilize it to make it a end the game, but it's not as good as... I In this deck, it's not as good as other decks I've had with it. Lightning Greaves is to protect my commander or protect my infect guy, depending on how it plays out. Uh, equi equipped creature has haste and can't be the target of spells or abilities. Obviously, I went with Greaves for the haste for my commander more than anything else, so that I could get the rat tokens started to be starting to be created as soon as possible. There's also another reason for the Greaves, and I'll get into that in a second. Demonic Tutor, yes, this is a revised version. Let's me go search for anything I need. So if I need it, I have Beseech the Queen and Demonic Tutor to go find my stuff. Uh, black Market. Five to cast enchantment. Whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on Black Market. At the beginning of my pre-combat main phase, add black to my mana pool for each charge counter on it. It's again to help. There's a lot of things going to die on my side of the board. Uh, if I can get any advantage out of it, it'll be with Black Market so I can have black mana available to me at any time. Uh, Phyrexian Arena, 3 to cast. This is to help me draw cards. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and you lose a life. I don't know any black deck that doesn't want to put this in it, in it at all. For Especially in Commander. It's card advantage. I don't care if it's a life. I will sacrifice a life to draw a card. Uh, Phyrexian Reclamation is a flex as well. It may come out depending on what I acquire later. 
One to cast enchantment for two and two life. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, it's good for relentless rats just to keep them coming back. Same thing with Oversold Cemetery. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep for two to cast enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep. Uh, if you have four or more creature cards in your graveyard, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. More relentless rats equals more gooder. <coughs> Soul Foundry, another enabler for the rats, for relentless rats. Put a cast artifact with imprint. When Soul Foundry enters the battlefield, exile a creature card from your hand. For X and tap, create a token that's a copy of that card where X is the converted mana cost. So again, relentless rats. Uh, because you can have more than one, it makes things like this card easier to play. So I'm going to get another one when this is in my hand. Even if it's not my opening hand, I will eventually draw both of these at some point together. A Relentless Rat and a Soul Foundry. And now you're just turning them out. Making more copies of them. At least one a turn. If you can find a way to untap it or somebody helps you in some way, shape, or form untap it, you can make more than one a turn. Seems like a viable option to me. Now, <laughs> this one I just added yesterday before I was going to make this uh, video. Bolus's Citadel, so three black. I love the three black in that casting cost. Three of any. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its actual mana cost. And then I'm making a lot of rat tokens. So tapping and sacrificing 10 non-land permanents and each opponent loses 10 life is not hard to see happening multiple times a game. Uh, <coughs> again, if I could find a way to untap this over and over again, I'd probably be able to win on turn, like, you know, on in one turn with just this out. So, and it's foil. I had to throw the foil version in there. It's a cool card, for, especially in this deck. The reason why I don't mind having the extra mana is for the Exsanguinate. Exsanguinate is 2 black and X. Each opponent loses X life and you gain life equal to life loss this way. You can technically end the game with enough mana uh, created by just making tokens and sacrificing them with Ash Knight's Altar or having a lot of Relentless Rats out because of your devotion. It's just an... Uh, it's actually a game finisher. Uh, you can close out the game with this very easily, especially in this deck with all the mana production. It's the only X spell I have in here. It's not the only mana sink, but it's the only X spell, and it's it's for the most part it's it's a it's a game finisher. And the last card in the deck to make the only viable infinite combo in the game. Thorn Thorn Bite Staff. Let me show you what this does, and I'll show you why. This is infinite with Morrow Gnar. Two to cast artifact. Uh, equipped creature has two and tap. Uh, this creature deals one damage to target creature or player. And whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from play, untap this creature. Equips for four. Don't care about the other lines. Let's just ignore the other line. It, it, it can attach to a shaman. Don't care. <coughs> Excuse me. So the infinite combo is really simple. Sacrifice a rat, put X11 rat tokens, uh, black rat tokens into play. So create X11 tokens. So you tap him to create the tokens. So you tap him and then sacrifice something with this attached to it. Whenever a creature dies, I can untap it. So you're tapping, sacrificing a creature, untapping, sacrificing one. You can create infinite tokens with this. With the right situation the right cards in play the right cards in your hand what have you you're gonna have infinite rats you can if with astronauts alter out you can have infinite uh mana and if you have exsanguinate in your hand you basically just burn out the board so that's the only infinite combo in the deck i try to get one to two in each deck uh for this one it was unfortunately only one I only do that because I don't want to be stuck there forever in a game where I can't get it to close out. Uh, we've all had that, op that that happen where you're sitting there for eight hours and nobody can win the game. So I always put one infinite in there for, su for some way to close out the game if I need to. So, there you have it. That is my version of Morrow Gnawer for Commander. 
Uh, there are some changes I will make to the deck as we go. I'm not 100% sure uh, if I'll be able to acquire some of them or not. Uh, some of them are rats, some of them are artifacts, and, you know, uh, I... I do have one option. Uh, I want to put Torment of Hellfire in here just so I can use that on top of Exsanguinate to close out the games with the infinite possibility. However, um, I have it. I just had to find it, and I didn't find it in time to make the video. Uh, plus, I haven't figured out what I want to take out for it if I do find it. So, a couple options I can go with. So, that is, again, that's Morrow Nor Commander, my version of it. Uh, I want to give you guys a small note before I go ahead and sign out here. Um, when I make these decks, I don't make these decks optimized on purpose. I don't want to have a power level 10 competitive EDH deck. I am not a competitive person. I'm a person who likes to have fun. I could go ahead and dismantle all my decks and make two very powerful decks if I wanted to. These are not for that reason. These are to help people see ideas, help get, help, ugh. these are to help people get ideas for the decks they want to build around or get combos that they didn't see this is more of a helpful tool for you guys so that you can see the mind of somebody who's been playing this game since it began i know most if not all the cards by heart and what i don't know i use a uh, an app on my phone called uh, mtg companion it literally helps me when i'm having an ms moment i can't remember a card name or what a card does but i remember the name uh, it's a great tool to use I, I highly recommend it i have no but no part in it whatsoever it is not something i have any monetary gain from i don't have any support to it at all other than it helps me get through what i need to get through so again these decks are power level sixes maybe fives possibly fours some maybe sevens maybe eights i'm not going for competitive so you know when you're watching these videos keep that in mind these are for fun uh, it's for my enjoyment, yes. It's to make people, when I play them, see stuff they might not have seen before. Uh, a lot of people know about Thornbite with Maro Nar, for instance, but not everybody. So it's just to get people to see things that they've never seen before, and for fun. So keep that in mind when you're, you know, I'm I'm doing this every every other week. I try to get one up, and it's just to the entertain you guys. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is stay safe, guys. Everybody, please, stay inside for now. I don't want to lose our Magic community. And I know that it sucks that we can't really play Magic together right now. But if we're going to kill this thing, we're going to get rid of this thing, or we're going to at least ride it out until, you know, they come up with a vaccine or something, just stay inside. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people still, you know, in my neighborhood going out and doing stuff and just stay in, please. I want to get through this so that I can go outside. I have issues where I can't catch this thing or this thing may kill me, and I just want to get past this. So stay safe. Play the Commander games on, you know, online the way that you guys have been. I've been saying it in the Commander group. I see you guys are getting games together. I myself don't have the tech to be able to do that. I have a 15-year-old friggin' phone. My laptop is older than my son, who's 12. I mean, I don't have the tech like you guys have out there. I didn't prepare for this as well. Um, so you guys enjoy that stuff. But get online games going. Do whatever you have and whatever you can. Uh, that is, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I didn't mean to preach to you guys. I just, I want you guys to stay safe. So that's what I have for you. Again, that's Morrow Nuller. And uh, I believe I'm going to attempt to do either... Animar or Muldratha, my versions of it, not super competitive, but fun, uh, for the next Commander video, and in between that, I believe I will do an unboxing of some sort, I don't know what I'm going to pick yet, I have stuff I need from Front of Drain, so maybe that will be my bo next unboxing, so, until then, stay safe, hopefully I see you next time, and have a good day.